Greetings everyone, Matt from aerialandskyviews.com. So I talked on my website on the first steps page about the AirMap app. Uh, this is a great app that I like to use to make sure that I am flying my drone within uh, clear airspace, making sure that I'm following the rules of the FAA, um, making sure that I have the ability to call airports and airstrips and things like that to let them know that I am flying in the area. Because when you call these places, it more often than not, when you call them, um, they, they'll say, no, that's fine. You know, you're well below any traffic that's going to be in my area, or I don't have any traffic in my area today, so you're fine. Different things like that. You can get the AirMap app here at Google Play, or you can get it from the Apple Store. So if we just go to the top here, and we type in AirMap, it's the first one to pop up. So here you can see here. This is a nice little screen here, so you get some of the information about the AirMap app. just tells you that it's a leading provider of aeronautical data. And then there's the What's New section here. And this is pretty cool because you can see the different things that they've added recently. So they recently added some first responder activity layers and advisories, which is pretty cool, as well as some other just bug fixes. Uh, so one of the cool things here you can see here, AirMap is the provider of airspace maps to the FAA's Know Before You Fly campaign. So that's really cool. These guys have teamed up with the FAA, so now you know for sure that the FAA is giving them the right information, and you know that you have the right information as well. So here you can see just some of the different features as well that it covers. It was just recently updated as well, so we're on version 1.16. Hit the little X here, and we're going to open it up. So it does GPS location to your location and uh, whatnot when you open it, so, uh, you know, just going to get ready here and open that up. Okay, guys, so I've zoomed in here to an area here after I opened it up, and I found a suitable area. Let's say I'm on vacation and I decided to come here. Uh, since I live on the East Coast, uh, we go down to the, you know, the East Coast all the time here and uh, different stuff like that. So let's say I decided to stop off here just south of uh, the Rehoboth Beach area. So, so far I'm in a completely green area. So this is pretty cool because now you can see that you're in a green area, which means there are no advisories down here in Lewis, Delaware, and things like that. So there's nothing that's going to stop me from creating a flight. So if I zoom in here to the Delaware Seashore State Park, I'm in a green area. So the FAA doesn't have any restrictions. It's not national park space, things like that. So I may be in a green area on the air map. You would want to definitely check to make sure that the Seashore State Park does not have any drone restrictions uh, that you would be in violation of. But if you're not, let's say I'm going to go right here to this little spot here. And I can open it up here. And now this allows me to create a little flight. So I can either do a point. I can do path, and I can literally draw a freehand path, like this is the area I'm going to fly, right? So it gives you that information as well. Or you can just do an area, so you can say, okay, I'm going to fly in just this area. And then this way you can you can adjust it then and uh, you know, shape it how you want, things like that. So that's pretty cool uh, that you can set up all that there. You can delete it here. So I typically do points because it's just easier. I'm going to fly in a big circle or, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't need to get that elaborate with my flights, things like that in most cases. So let's say I've got this ready here. I'm ready to go. So all I have to do here is hit the next button at the bottom. This gives us some more information here. Altitude, 400 feet max, duration an hour. I'm just going to say 15 minutes. You can put your pilot's name and your aircraft in there as well, things like that. If you hit save, it's going to create the flight. It puts it to the... Uh, to the map and you get this little icon there and that just means that that's your active flight area uh, and so that other people using the air map can see that you've got a flight going on and things like that so <clears throat> it's just a nice way to see things like that once you're done with that all you have to do here you have this little red bar here you can close your flight that just removes it from the map um, you also have some layer options here so you got these three buttons on the top right here you've got the globe image here so that turns it into satellite view so that you can see the different satellite imagery. Now, obviously, I probably have a tough time flying where I was because it doesn't really look like there's anything that would allow me to get there. So I'd probably be flying closer to Route 1 there. Uh, but I like to keep it like this because this keeps it uh, from being so cluttered. Um, and then you also have night. So each time you tap on it, it gives you a different version of the modes and different layers to the global map there. If 
I hit the button below that, it looks like stacked books, that's the layers. So here in the recreational side, you can see airports. I have heliports turned off. And the reason I have heliports turned off is because, well, it's good to know where heliports are because that is technically air traffic. I have found that in more cases than not, there are so many more heliports than you ever would have imagined possible. And so because they're listed at the FAA, it's listed in the map. A good word of advice at this point is to just be aware of what's around you. If you hear something that sounds like a helicopter, I would bring your quad down below 100 feet. If not, land it immediately. Just verify that there's nothing in the area, that it might be way far out of your flight range or it's flying away from you, flying beside you, things like that, that you're not going to be impacted by a helicopter coming into the area. You can also see some other flight restrictions and advisory caution layers. So you've got flight restrictions, wildfires, first responder stuff. If you go into commercial, you can see the different types of airspace that are controlled, things like that, as well as all those other advisories. Because I'm a recreational flyer, I'm going to fly under the recreational layer, so I don't have to worry about having excessive advisories and things like that. If you hit that little GPS arrow there, that's just going to take you to your current GPS location. So let's zoom out a little bit here and just try and see if we can find some other things in the area. So here, let's go over to Long Neck. I see this little yellow dot here. Uh, so this little yellow dot's going to pull something up. Oh, that's a flight restriction. That's actually a red dot. So there's different colors on the map, and they mean different things. Obviously, red is restricted. So if we tap the little button here, oh, there's first responder activity going on right there. So, um, so right here, this is a perfect example. Right here in Long Neck, Delaware, there's some first responder activity going on. So you're not allowed to fly in this area. Not sure what kind of first responder activity is going on here. It could be anything. It could be police, fire, EMS, different things like that. So if you just move just out of the way here, you can see the rest of the area is green. And as we zoom out, you're going to see some other stuff here. So we've got two restricted area. We've got first responder activity there as well. Uh, so you can see that we've got some stuff going on there. Now if I come down here to Sandy Landing, we are in an advisory area. So if we hit that there, it says here West PVT Airport. So obviously there's an airport here. So if we zoom out a little bit more, you can see if I zoom out this diameter here, this is about a five mile an hour radius or five mile radius. Uh, there's some f uh, flight restrictions. Ah, oh, the Cary Field Airport actually is completely restricted, so you can't fly there at all. Things like that. Now I'm not sure exactly where it is in the map, but if you zoomed in enough, it would be red, and you would get that restriction there. So here we're just down into the uh, into the, the uh, regular flight restrictions as well. So you can just see here, this is just going to tell you these are within five miles of an airport. And you can see here, if you lived in Springbrook Forest, you're going to be within two different places. You've got the West PVT and you've got Cary Field. So let's say I'm in an advisory area and I'm here at the Springbrook Forest Road. And I want to fly you know, near here. So I'm going to hit the button. I'm going to hit my tap here. So you can see you get the advisory here. You hit next. Still going to give you the same information here. But when you hit next a second time, here it's going to say here, these places do not accept digital notice. So these two airports here do not accept the notice from the app to let you know that you'll be flying in the area. So what that would mean is, is that you would actually have to call them. Now the app doesn't show any phone numbers. So therefore you would actually have to look them up. So in this case, uh, you want to make sure that you're smart about it. Give them a call. Just let them know. Say, hey, you know, I'm going to be flying. I'm only going to be flying 100 feet. You know, the trees in the area are over 100 feet or whatever. You know, is it okay if I fly? And more often than not, you're going to find that most airports are going to say yes. Because in more, of, in more cases than not, if you're going to be under 100 feet or even under 200 feet, depending on where you are and when you tell them, you're probably not going to be in any kind of a flight path. But if you are... They'll be able to tell you these things and let you know, no, you shouldn't fly. I've got some planes coming in or whatever, things like that. So it's always a good idea to give them a call. So I'm going to back out of all this here. And uh, let's see here. Let's just go up a little bit more. Try and fly in the Lewis area here. So again, I've got that advisory. We're going to open that up. Hit next, hit next. This one does not accept a digital notice. However, you'll see they'll give you a phone number. So if you hit the review button here, you can get that information, you hit notices. If you tap on the phone number, it's actually going to take you into your phone. 
Now you can call them, and you can actually get that information and, and speak to the tower as well. So I'm just hit the back button here. So this is Eagle Crest Hudson. And I'm just going to go back here. Now, if you go into the review and you say, you know what, I'm just going to fly anyway, um, you know, or you've gotten the approval or whatever, you can hit submit. It's not going to stop you from hitting submit and things like that. It's going to post that in there into the app, and that's going to let other people using the app know that you've been flying. So you just hit that red bar at the top, and that's going to stop you from flying there. Uh, so if we zoom out here, again, all these yellow circles are airports and restricted or airport airspace, things like that. So you got this big red area here. So obviously that was a flight restricted area, and this is on Assateague Island. So because it's a national park, if you tap it open here, it's just going to say no national park because it's just a generic. So then you also have some special use airspace as well. So those are some things that you want to look out for and be careful with. Um, just interesting to see what this blue area is here. Let's see if it pulls anything up. It doesn't look like it's going to. Uh, I wanted to see here that in some cases the blue on some maps means that um, you're within either a no-fly zone or other things. So here, this is advisory. So, um, so Virginia Capes 1 special use airspace. So this is probably airspace because um, we're getting near Wallops Island. And Wallops Island, if anybody is familiar, Wallops Island was a NASA test facility at one point, And they would launch some things from there. So you got some uh, interesting airspace there as well. So let's just zoom in here a little bit more. So again, here we've got some advisories here in the Chesapeake Bay area. And you can see up here in Washington, you got a lot of red, you got some purples and things like that. Uh, the black here is for sporting events, so this is something pretty cool. So if you zoom in here into the Baltimore area here, um, it's going to pull up flight restrictions. You got the Orioles versus Yankees game, and you've also got Fort McHenry there near the tunnels. So it's going to tell you here that the flight restriction is from 6.05 until a little after midnight. Uh, and you can go to the website uh, here for the FAA, and that's just going to go over the other information as to why there's a flight restriction and different things like that. So this is a great app to use, guys, and I highly recommend that you use it. It just really helps keep you safe, keeps other air traffic safe as well, and also just lets you know, you know if you're not going to if you're not going to be in a restricted area because the last thing anybody wants to do is be in a restricted flight area such as like a national park or things like that, and figure, you know what, I'm just going to put it up for five minutes. It's not going to be a big deal. You know, nobody's going to know. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if the rangers use the air map so that they can see when people publish a flight. Um, so it's just a good idea, as well as the fact that if, if a ranger's in the area and he happens to hear the drone or see the drone, um, it, they can confiscate the drone, and nobody wants to have their drones confiscated or anything like that. So you know, be smart, be safe, you know, fly with caution, Call the airports, you know, it is a requirement as a hobbyist uh, drone flyer that you call the airports and let them know if you're flying within that five-mile airspace. Obviously, you can't enter true airspace, uh, true uh, grounds with them, you know, things like that, but just some things to consider. So I hope you guys got something with the uh, with the app here. It's pretty cool. If you go into the, the menu bar at the top, you can do your different things there, and uh, you can set your aircraft, you can set your name, different things like that as well. So, I hope you guys learned something from it, and uh, if you'd like, check out more videos and uh, stuff like that at Aerial and Sky View, or, I'm sorry, aerialskyviews.com, uh, where you can see some more reviews of drones that we have, that we've uh, that we reviewed over the, in the past couple months, things like that. You can also check out our partners page or our personal drone page to find links to uh, some personal drones and things like that for the hobbyist flyers. I've got pages in there for professional flyers as well. And like I said, if you go to the partners page, you can actually find partners that have teamed up with us to bring you direct links to their products. So again, thanks for tuning in. And uh, if you like it, uh, check out our YouTube channel as well through the link on the website. And subscribe today for more videos like this as they come out. Thanks again, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day. Happy flying.